So good to have you join us once again. Here we are for another time of encouraging words together from the scripture. Just before I read the verse for today, I want to talk for just a minute about names. Where are, what our names are, where they come from. And uh, do, you, uh, do you know the meaning of your name? Just about every name has a meaning. Some of them very profound, some of them just very generic. I am uh, blessed with what sounds like two last names, Burton Campbell. Burton was my grandmother's maiden name. And of course, Campbell on uh, my grandfather's last name, his surname, which goes back for generations. And both of those names have a meaning. And I don't know if you know the meaning of your name or not, but Burton is, uh, is a place. Uh, it's a town in uh, Leicestershire, England. It has, uh, and so people that had the last name Burton in those days meant that that's where they were from. It, uh, it literally means like a, a fort or an encampment or a settlement. That's as much meaning as they can find in a name. And so uh, most people that have that name have it as a surname. It's my, of course, first name. And uh, so it just means fort, settlement, uh, a town in Leicest Leicestershire. I hope I say that right. Part of England. Campbell, on the other hand, is much more interesting. Very old Scottish name, Campbell. Spelling was a little different in those early, early days. And uh, it means crooked mouth. And um, I just find that ironic. I know I'm a little self-conscious thinking about it now, but I know throughout my life when I smile, there is a tendency, and I don't know if this is related to the name or not, but there's a tendency that one side of my face goes up higher than the other. Do I have a crooked mouth? It's kind of funny to think about. That is the classic name. And it is kind of a family trait on the Campbell side that we can trace back in pictures for a very long time. So Burton Campbell, fortress or settlement and crooked mouth. When uh, we were getting ready to have children many, many years ago and uh, now, and my wife was pregnant with our first child, we were considering different names for our children. And uh, it's kind of funny. Our kids all have a bit of alliteration in their name. Their first name starts with the, the same consonant sound as the last name. So Campbell and our kids are Clark, Kayla, and Connor. But before we had any of them, uh, when Linda was first pregnant and we were trying to figure out what were possible names, and of course you're trying out different ones and how do they sound, do you like that name or not, for a while we entertained the name Cameron. We thought Cameron Campbell. That was kind of fun to say until we found out that Cameron had a similar root to Campbell. And as Campbell meant crooked mouth, Cameron means crooked nose. And we thought we cannot do that to our child. Can you imagine? We just named him crooked nose, crooked mouth. Thought that's not going to work at all. Kind of funny to think about. Names have a meaning. In biblical days, in the scripture, those meanings often were quite profound. And parents believed as they gave a name to their child that the meaning of that name would bring great influence to that child. And the hope was is that it would represent something about them all through their lives, about life, about God, about, about who they were becoming. And so names took on an important, important meaning. And that brings us to our scripture for today. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Joseph was having a dream from the Lord in which an angel appeared to him. And that angel was telling him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife, that they would indeed give birth to the Savior of the world, and that God was calling Joseph to parent that child. And so in verse 21 of Matthew's uh, first chapter, this is what the angel says to Joseph says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, a name full of meaning, even then. And uh, Jesus was a very common name. Here in America, you might have a common name of John or Mike, or we have lots of Roberts here on our campus, and names that, you know, generationally are very common. Jesus was one of those names in that day, a very common name, but an important name. 
a name full of meaning. Here's just a little bit of background. Jesus is the English version of a Greek name, Yosus. We spell that as I-E-S-O-U-S, uh, Yosus. And so what you have there is uh, a Greek name, but that name is not original in Greek. It itself is a translation of a more common Hebrew name. You might remember that that though the New Testament was written in Greek, the common language of all the surrounding area, Jesus was Jewish by birth. His mother Mary was Hebrew. His adoptive father Joseph was Hebrew. And the Hebrew name is Yeshua. Yeshua. Sometimes people say it as Yeshua. You, uh, you, if you watch the, the famed Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ, all of that movie is in Hebrew and Aramaic, mostly Aramaic, actually, which is very similar to Hebrew. And you will hear, it's all subtitled, but if you listen with your, your ear, the name that they call Jesus in that movie is this biblical name, Yeshua. Well, why am I talking all about that? Here's the interesting thing. If we were translating from the Hebrew directly into English, that name would translate as Joshua. Yeshua. Joshua. You can hear the similarity between the Hebrew and the English. But if we translate it into Greek first, it turns into Yosus. And then into English, Jesus. But here's the point. Think about the history of Joshua in the Bible. You might remember very early on, we have Joshua who followed Moses, second in command of all the people. And after Moses passed, it was Joshua who led the Israelites into the promised land. He, in a sense, was their savior, took them to a land of promise. And so from its very roots and beginning, the name Joshua has this meaning of he rescues, he saves. It literally comes from a word that means to rescue, to deliver, to set free. And so the angel says to Joseph, you will name him Jesus, just the Greek version of Yeshua. You are to name him Yeshua. You are to name him Jesus. Why? Because he's going to rescue. He's going to save. He will save his people from their sins. That name was full of meaning. It's exactly who Christ is and what he came to do. He is the savior of the world. And for all who trust in him, who all who open their hearts and ask Jesus to be their Lord and savior, as they turn from sin and turn toward him by his grace, he not only forgives us, he cleanses us, he makes us his own and gives us the promise of eternal life. Yeshua, the Savior, who leads us all into a promised land. That is the glorious hope of Christmas. Jesus, the Savior. He's come to save us all, including you. With that thought, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glorious message that we're reminded of time and time again during this time of year. And as we prepare for the celebration of Christmas before long, we thank you that Jesus came to save us all from the power and corruption of sin. We could not rescue ourselves. We had no way to cleanse ourselves from the infection of sin. But you have made a way, Father God, by sending Jesus as an atoning sacrifice for us all. Thank you, Father, for your great love. Thank you, Jesus, for your willingness to come and to be born and live among us, to show us who God is and what he's like, and to lay down your life for us all. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you raised Christ from the dead. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead through faith now lives in each of us as we call Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Oh, the glorious hope that we're reminded of this time of year. For that and more, we give you thanks today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Be encouraged in the Lord today. You have a Savior. 
trust him. He is Christ the Lord. Here at Friendship Village, we're working hard to show you these videos three times a day. They're brand new at 4.30. They repeat again at, at, at uh, 8 o'clock at night, and then again about 8 o'clock in the morning. You can always find them on YouTube. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell on your smart device, whether it's tablet, phone, computer, whatever you use to connect to the internet. And you'll see all of our videos there right now. God bless you today. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. We will see you next time.